We are just 39 days away from Election Day in the U.S. Today, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney are battling it out in Virginia. I'm Daniel Prusilides with Washington Bureau Chief Bryn Weiss, live from the U.S. Capitol. With only 39 days to go, Sun News will take you to the finish line with live, special coverage every night until November 6th with Bryn and me at the helm. We'll bring you the strategy, the polls, and the attack ads you won't see anywhere else. We'll get today's big story from Bryn coming right up, but first... The latest polling numbers have bumped Obama up to a four-point lead, according to the Real Clear Politics Average. On the campaign trail today, both Romney and Obama are in Virginia territory, with Romney heading to Pennsylvania and D.C. as well. Vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan is in the state of Tennessee, and Joe Biden is keeping a low profile again. Where they're campaigning, what they're talking about, and everything you need to know about the U.S. race. This is your road to the White House. Over to Bryn Weiss in Washington now. Bryn, take it away. Well, Daniel, the election campaign is certainly heating up ahead of next week's debate with President Barack Obama and Mitt Romney shadowing each other in the same state again for the third straight day. Today it was Virginia, as you mentioned, with President Barack Obama holding a rally in the southeast corner of the state in Virginia Beach and Mitt Romney speaking to a group of veterans in a D.C. suburb in the north. And while Romney, of course, talked about jobs and the economy, what he says are the focus of his campaign, he also warned Virginians that President Obama is proposing to slash military spending at a time when instability and violence still plague much of the world. Take a listen. The world is not a safe place. It remains dangerous. You look around the world, look in, in, look in North Korea. They continue to develop and, and promote nuclear capability on their own part and to export it to others. Syria, 20, 30,000 people killed in Syria. Iran, closer and closer to having nuclear capability. Egypt, now with the Muslim Brotherhood president. Pakistan, highly uh, um, tumultuous. Afghanistan, our men and women still in Afghanistan. You, you keep going around the world, it is still a troubled and dangerous world. Now, specifically, Daniel, uh, Romney warned the crowd that Obama was proposing a $1 trillion cut in military spending over the next 10 years and that those cuts would result in 150,000 defense jobs being lost in Virginia alone. That's a particularly poignant attack given Virginia is home to about one-fourth of all active U.S. military personnel and it's also home, of course, to the Pentagon. Now, Obama in Virginia Beach also touted his support for the military, saying as long as he's in charge, the U.S. military will stay the strongest military in the world. Take a listen. We got a new tower across the, the New York skyline. Al Qaeda's on the path to defeat. Bin Laden is dead. But we still face serious threats as we saw just a couple weeks ago with the tragic death of our ambassador and three of his colleagues. And that's why, as long as I'm Commander-in-Chief Virginia, we will sustain the strongest military the world has ever known. Now, Daniel, Virginia is not traditionally a swing state. In fact, when President Obama won it in 2008, he was the first Democrat to carry it in a presidential election since Johnson in 1964. But with the growth of federal employees uh, moving into D.C. suburbs in the north, and also considering the fact that 20% of Virginia's 8 million people are African American, a voting bloc that's solidly in Obama's corner, the consensus is, again, this election, that uh, Virginia's 13 electoral college votes are up for grabs and polls as they do in Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania and some other key swing states. Polls in Virginia show Obama with a slight lead over Mitt Romney, which means the Republicans have their work cut out for them uh, in November. Uh, one thing that Ro the Romney camp is hoping to use to their advantage are comments Obama made in 2008 about bankrupting coal plants. Virginia is the 12th largest coal producer in the United States and there have actually been a number of energy job losses in Virginia over the past four years. The Romney 
campaign came out with a new ad that they started airing in Virginia today, bringing up those comments from 2008 when Obama said, let the coal plants go bankrupt. Well, Bryn, one thing that Virginia doesn't have is a lot of unemployment, at least compared to the rest of the country. Virginia's unemployment rate is two points below the national average. But I would wager that Virginians still care about the economy. And some of the economic numbers that came out today were not great for the United States as a whole. Did that come up on the campaign trail? It certainly did, Daniel, and great point. Uh, the second quarter GDP growth uh, numbers came out today, and it showed that the economy grew at 1.3 percent, not the 1.7 percent that had been projected. And, of course, Mitt Romney pounced on that. Uh, at his rally, he lamented that Russia and China both have economies growing much faster than the U.S. He said, and I'm using his word here, the U.S. economy need to, needed to be reinvigorated uh, right away because manufacturers were losing jobs uh, elsewhere and they couldn't be replaced fast enough. And also the Romney campaign came out with a statement right after that GDP number was released this morning saying the U.S. economy is, quote, officially stuck in neutral and said job creators and manufacturers cannot afford another four years of President Barack Obama. What about the Democrats? Are they keeping quiet on the campaign trail about the economy? Well, they're certainly keeping quiet, Daniel, about that GDP number. But one number that they are talking about came from the Labor Department this morning. I'll let the critics wonder as to whether this was politically motivated or not. But the Labor Department brought out new job numbers for August early today. They're slightly tweaked uh, August job numbers. And what they show, Daniel, is that Obama has now replaced all 4.3 million jobs that were lost in his first year in office when literally the U.S. economy was losing 750,000 jobs a month. So it, since 2010, the U.S. economy uh, lost 4.3 million jobs, but the new jobs number out this morning shows that 4.4 million jobs have been created. Just to put all this in perspective, though, Bill Clinton, in his two terms as president, created 22 million new jobs. Right now, after four years, Barack Obama has about 130,000 new jobs. So he's got a long way to go if he wants to match Bubba in the jobs creation department. Well, it's, it's fascinating to see how this all plays out in the campaign because I was just looking at a Rasmussen poll th that came out regarding the economy. 43% saying they believe the economy would improve under Romney. Only 36% saying the same thing about Obama. There may be a bit of an advantage on that issue building for the Romney campaign. And, and there always has been, Daniel. That's been really Romney's strength in every poll that we've seen, no matter who had the lead in what state. Time and time again, uh, when it comes to who do you trust to handle the economy and who do you trust to pay down the massive U.S. debt and deal with the deficit issue, Romney comes out on top, which explains, of course, why he is so adamant to keep his campaign focused on the issue of economy and jobs, because that's what voters obviously trust him most. Also in these Rasmussen Reports poll, though, which I find interesting, nationally, Romney and Obama are tied right now at 48 percent apiece. So it's interesting to watch these poll numbers change and obviously poll numbers have come under fire uh, recently because they've shown Obama with quite large leads in some swing states and uh, people don't quite believe those numbers but as you mentioned on that issue of the economy Romney is always uh, consistently polled ahead of Obama uh, and that does explain I think why the economy is the number one issue for the Romney campaign as well as for American voters because that unemployment rate still at 8.1 percent nationally that is not very good and Obama knows it and he said again today the economy isn't where it should be but he asked voters to give him another chance. Just very quickly Bryn I imagine that Romney's message on coal and coal plants and uh, on defense cuts have to resonate in in Virginia while at the same time the Democrats probably still have an advantage in the urban centers. Yes, they're very much so. Even in the south in Richmond, it's a Democrat stronghold. Up in the north, which are all D.C. suburbs, uh, very much a Democrat uh, stronghold. The, the coal production from the state actually comes from the southwest, which is already Republican. The issue here will be, of course, energy as a larger part of Romney's campaign. It's certainly one of his five points that he talks about, as well as uh, approving that Keystone pipeline from Canada to the U.S. within the first hundred days. Uh, increasing coal production across right. the U.S., including here in Virginia, Virginia is something he's talked about many times and will do again. All right. Thank you very much, Bryn. We'll have more from Bryn Weiss just ahead. <laughs>